Hey, my name is Mark Smith, and I'm here today just to share with you a little bit about what God is doing in my life and what God has done in my life already. And it all starts taking place 57 years ago in a small town in West Texas. My mother had a double mastectomy before she was even pregnant with me, and so she battled cancer for 18 years. Um, and my dad was an alcoholic who um, was very abusive, physically abusive. and. Um, a lot of times, if I just even looked at him wrong, I would get the long or the short end of the stick, if you, whichever way you kind of like want to put it. But um, he was b very abusive. And at 10 years old, I was um, molested by um, two boys in our neighborhood who were older than me. And, and it was at that time that, because of the relationship I had with my dad, that when I was together with those two guys, it was a weird, twisted way of thinking, but at, finally, at that time, I thought, I'm accepted, I'm loved, I'm affirmed by these two guys, even though they were doing what they were doing to me. It felt like something real because I didn't have that connection and that bonding with my dad. And so um, it was at that point in time where the enemy, now I didn't know it then, but I know it now, where the enemy said, this is where I'm gonna jack your life up. and. I didn't realize that anything was even going to happen um, after that. We had moved from California back to Texas, and, and at 12 years old, I actually trusted Christ as my Savior. And that was through um, my mother who led me to Christ. And um, we would sit in her chair um, for hours, and she would read the Bible to me. And, and it was at that time where I knew she was going to heaven because she loved her some Jesus. When I think of it, I just want to—I want to cry because she, Jesus, was her strength through all these years of going through in and out of of um, radiation and chemotherapy and just all the cancer treatments she was going through, and I never knew when she was going to die. So, all I did know is that I wanted to be in heaven with her than be on earth with my dad. So, the the fear of being left on earth with my dad. Um, was why at that time I trusted Christ because I didn't really understand. I knew he died, died for me and, and all that, but I didn't really understand everything um, in its greatest form. So at 15, uh, my parents bought me a piano and I started writing songs and, and they were all based on Jesus. And, and I knew at 15 that there was a calling on my life. I just didn't know that it was gonna take 40 something years for that calling to actually take effect. And in 1983, I auditioned for the Continental Singers, which was a singing group in California. And the members from the group came from all over the country to meet in California and to rehearse the concert. And then each group, I think there were like 12 or 13 groups, they would all go out to all different continents of the world and share the gospel um, through music and song. So um, it was at that time where I went to California for rehearsals and the very first day I stepped into the rehearsal room and I saw the most beautiful girl I'd ever seen in my life. And, and it's like the movies where everything just kind of went blurry except for her, that's how it happened. And I said to a friend of mine who also was on the tour, I'm like, I'm gonna marry her. And a year and a half later, um, we were married. She actually came with me to Texas. We packed my bags and she was from here in Philadelphia. And um, we moved up here and we continued to do our music ministry. And then we got married a year and a half later and um, continued on with music ministry. And then I signed a solo record deal in 1988. And um, um, we continued on going, was traveling to Virginia, all different places. But it was at that point in time in the record deal that my pride kind of stepped in the way and things started to crumble a little bit. I had also at the same time went back to school for my graphic design degree. And I met this guy who was just really nice and I thought he was a Christian. Um, but it turned out that he wasn't. He asked if I wanted to go out to um, eat and to a bar one night. And so I said, sure, why not? I asked my wife and she's like, yeah, go ahead. So I did it and I walked into the door of a gay club. And it was at that point in time where 
the bright lights and the loud music and everything got into my head and into my heart and every fiber of my being. And they say that watch out because sin will take you to places that you never ever thought you would go. And that's what happened that night. And I ended up stepping out of my marriage and I had to tell my wife um, what had happened. But the hardest thing about that was not only hurting her, but we just had a son eight months prior to that time. And so after a couple of weeks of, of me trying to just get my life together or whatever was going on, I decided that my marriage wasn't worth anything and that I was just gonna go ahead and, and live as a homosexual male. And so I left my wife and son crying on the living room floor. And, and that is a memory that um, I'll never, ever probably get out of my head. But I moved to DC and over the course of 27 years, I would have about four or five partners and thousands upon thousands of one night stands. Um, I developed a 12-year crystal meth addiction and pretty much a, an addiction to every party favor that you um, could name. And I also ended up with full-blown AIDS in 2008. And, um, but it didn't stop me. It didn't stop the fleshly desires that I was having. Um, I knew I was a Christian still. I actually ended up going to um, my brother's church. He's a pastor here at... Um, Crossing Community Church in Newtown. I would take every partner I had over the course of, of those 27 years and, and they would get to know my partner and they would love him. And the thing about my brother and his family and, and even the church family is that my brother only had to tell me one time about where he stood and the beliefs on homosexuality. The other times, all he showed me was love. He never judged me. He just showed me love. My partner, he would show love. The church showed them love. And, and it was that, that in a little bit in my story, you'll, you'll know how much that really meant to me. So it was in between all those years of living that lifestyle that I also developed a, a hearty pornography addiction. And, um, and I could go on and on about that, but I just wanna say that um, that is the hardest addiction um, that I dealt with and that I lived with. However, um, in 2014, actually December 31st of 2014, I cracked that meth pipe, I threw it in the trash, and I never looked back. And I know that now it was the Holy Spirit behind all that, and I never had any withdrawal symptoms, never went through anything like that. Um, and I know so many of my friends who are struggling with addiction and sometimes they can't go two or three days. And, and I'm thinking, how in the world have I just gone through 12 years and then stopped cold turkey? And I truly believe it was the Holy Spirit because what he was about to do in my life, I had no idea at the time, but what he was about to do was gonna blow my mind. So that was December 31st of 2014. And in February of 2017, things started happening. Um, a friend of mine really needed to, to vocalize some struggles she was having. And so I wasn't able to help her financially, but I was able to pray. And what I did is like, well, I haven't prayed in 27 years, so my first prayer was these exact words. Hey, it's me. I have a friend who could really use your help right now. And that was my first prayer. And that prayer became a daily prayer several times a day. And I would just continue to pray. And then I reached out to my brother, again, who is a pastor. And he was like, well, what is going on? Why are you praying? Um, what's going on with, you know, your life. He didn't say that, but I know he's thinking that. Um, and he would give me some scripture to also um, be able to help me deal with uh, my friend. And so my brother and I started to pray. So over a course of six months of us praying, all of a sudden, God started changing my heart. I was listening to Christian music, which was strange for me, um, but it made me cry. It hit my soul and, um, and God just started like working in the way that he does. And 
After my last partner had moved to Massachusetts, I just came to a point where I was like, I don't know what's going on, but God, obviously you do. So I'm kind of just going to um, give you this. And what I did though, is I contacted my brother and I said, if I was some Joe Schmo who came in off the streets and said, what do you believe about homosexuality? What would you tell me? Don't sugarcoat it because I'm your brother. Tell me exactly what you would say. And so he shared those verses with me and they hit me hard. And it was at that time that I thought, you know what? God has brought me through all of this, this mess and brokenness and, and struggle that I was either gonna give it my all or give it nothing. But the first thing I needed to do was open up the Bible and read it. And remember that it is the word of God. I can't just cherry pick the scripture that I don't wanna have to deal with because the first time you do that, then the entire Bible becomes not true. So I'm like, God, I'm giving all this to you, all this mess. And um, I remember sitting on my couch one day and I remember the Holy Spirit just saying to me, not in an audible you know, voice, but in my spirit, he said, and I always cry when I say this, so I'll probably get a little emotional, but that's just me. When you guys know me, you'll, you'll know that about me. But um, he said, you have been my child since you were 12 years old. You have always been my child. I've always loved you. I will always love you. I just want you to come home. And it was at that time, I'm like, but you realize who I am, right? Who I thought I was. And like he didn't already know, he's God. <laughs> he kind of had that in the bag. Um, so I gave it over to him, the whole mess, homosexuality, the porn, everything. And as I did that, as I became obedient, as I was reading his word, things started changing. He started healing my lives in ways that I would have never even thought could be healed. And, but I tell you one thing, the pornography addiction, I'm telling you this to all my brothers and sisters, it is something that you wanna take before God and say, help me with this, because that was the hardest thing for me to overcome. And, but God is a healer, that's who he is. Um, and so he healed those situations in my life. Doesn't mean I still don't struggle um, because I'm not perfect, um, but when I take it to the throne of God, he provides more and more abundant than I could ever dream of. The best thing about me coming back to the Lord a little over three years ago was that my ex-wife, who I haven't talked to in 28 years, also God was working in her life, in her heart and in her spirit. And we had the chance to sit down for six hours. We thought it was only gonna be one hour, but it was six hours and I was able to apologize and ask her forgiveness. And, and she said, absolutely. And and you have no idea what it means when God reconciles someone back into your life for His glory. So that was a great thing. And then my son is 30 years old and it has taken 30 years for us to have a relationship. You know, God sometimes doesn't do things on our timetable. And, but um, this past Christmas, we had our first Christmas lunch together. And, um, and we now talk like a couple times a week and it's just a great thing. So um, not only is it a, a sin and a, and a gay issue, it is reconciling. Even a marriage that I destroyed, God brought back together for His glory. And so, um, I hope that there is one or two things that you get out of my testimony um, that can touch your life. And, and I pray that if you're struggling with any of these things that you just, you just take it to God because you know what? We are His children. We are born and made in the likeness of Him and the world wants to tell us something different. And I'm just saying to you, don't listen to what the world says. Listen to what your heart says after you read the Word. Don't listen to what your heart says before you read the word because it'll tell you that you are gay, lesbian, trans, um, and a whole slew of other things. But I'm just saying, read the word, pray, speak to him. He's your father and, and he will get you through all these things. So that is my story. And um, the, the next song that I'm actually gonna sing is called God of Miracles. And it's based on 
God reconciling things into my life um, after years of being hurt. So he can do that for you. He did it for me and he's there to do it for you.